As an interventional cardiologist, I see lots of attention given to stents from patients and from operators. Although if you look at the word angioplasty, it's made of two parts. Angio is the vessel, plasty is the lead form, which is what we refer to now as vessel preparation. But this is more important than stenting, actually. So in this episode, we'll be discussing vessel preparation. We'll focus on rotational atherectomy. I'm Hussein Hachmet, I'm an interventional cardiologist and welcome to CardioBus. Preparation is angioplasty and it's the key to success of stenting in case we need stenting. We have two ways of vessel preparation, balloon-based and atherectomy-based. Balloons, of course, are easier they are more commonly used, they are cheaper, but they have the problem of lesion crossing. The other issue with balloons is that the force may be exerted more on the soft part of the vessel rather than the hard calcified part, and this can increase the chances of dissection and perforation. Atherectomy-based techniques, on the other hand, they are more expensive, they need some training, but there's usually no issue in crossing a lesion with rotablation or orbital atherectomy. Of course, they come with a risk of entrapment of the bear. And yeah. among the three atherectomy uh, approaches that we have, looking at the latest ACC guidelines on coronary revascularization, the only device that gets class 2A indication is rotational atherectomy. So in this episode, I'll be answering three essential questions. Why should we go for rotational atherectomy upfront? And what happens when we need upfront rotational atherectomy and we don't use it? And what happens when we need upfront rotational atherectomy and we use it? So, when should we use rotational atherectomy? There are three classic indications. The non-dilatable lesion, when the balloon gets the classic dog boning. Non-crossable lesion, when the balloon is unable to cross the lesion. Or when we cross with an imaging device and we find circumferential 360 degrees of superficial calcification. So, what happens when we're supposed to use upfront rota when we don't use it. I'll be giving three examples of the difficulties and the complications that we may face when we rely on balloons only. The first patient is a 55 year old lady with diabetes who had a myocardial infarction and then the right coronary artery was treated and she came for non culprit vessel angioplasty. It was distant but physiologically significant as shown by QFR and analyzing the lesion angiographically, we see a long line of fluoroscopically visible calcium at the bifurcation of the diagonal. We didn't give much attention to that. We were naive and we thought that this can be managed by balloons only. We placed our wires, one in the LED, one in the diagonal, but we couldn't cross with the balloon. But the body wire held and we could expand a shorter 2.5 millimeter balloon. And then we thought that the job is done, it's time to deliver the stent. But for, to our surprise, we were unable to deliver anything. Although we had heavy support wire in the LED, another wire in the diagonal, and we had a guide catheter extension at the lesion, we were still unable to deliver any balloon or any stent. So the answer here is that we need to ablate because of the long segment of fluoroscopic calcium. We did three runs of rotational atherectomy with 1.5 millimeter bear. And once this has been done, the stent was delivered easily. It was expanded and it was optimal. And that was the final result after two drug eluting stents and balloon optimization. But the lesson here is that whenever you see a long segment of fluoroscopic calcium, then there's a big chance that balloons alone will not be sufficient and think of upfront rota that could make the procedure much easier. The second situation was more drastic. This was an 80-year-old lady who came with a high-risk non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. We see again sign of long segment of fluoroscopically visible calcium across the diagonal. It looked straightforward. We thought that we can manage also just with balloons. The OCT catheter did not cross. So we said, let's continue with ballooning. We dilated with a two millimeter balloon. Then we found there is a significant residual lesion. So we said, let's upgrade our balloons. We placed a body wire. We delivered a 2.5 millimeter balloon. And you see the classic dog boning. The soft parts of the lesions were opened, whereas the calcified part in the middle 
remained undilated. So we went more aggressive with balloons. We inflated the balloon up to 25 atmospheres. This was a special high pressure balloon. The balloon was able to open the lesion, but this came at the cost of an abrupt vessel occlusion. This is because the balloon acts on the soft elastic parts of the vessel rather than the calcified parts. So the force is distributed unequally and this results in a dissection and abrupt vessel occlusion. Here you see there was complete interruption of flow in the LED. The patient became shocked and crashing. We were able to deliver a stent in the middle of circular or near circulatory arrest. We inflated the stent, we optimized it. We started cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And once we optimized the stent, the patient came back. There was a lesion distant to the stent that we also treated and you can see the final result. But we were very close to losing the patient because we counted only on balloons in a situation where atherectomy should have been used from the very beginning. Another even worse situation was a patient that we received from another facility as she had an angioplasty 48 hours ago. Then she presents with acute ST elevation myocardial infarction and pulmonary edema. She was shocked, so we had to insert an intraortic balloon and you see the fluoroscopically visible calcium. And so we try to understand what happened. Looking at just fluoroscopy, we see that the stent is underexpanded because there are chunks of calcium that apparently have not been modified and the stent was underexpanded. When we went back to the report, we discovered that the previous operator didn't do any debulking. He just counted on some balloon inflation, then he deployed the stent. So the stent was underexpanded and this resulted in acute stent thrombosis. So we've seen what happens when we ignore proper vessel preparation. Catastrophes can happen. So what happens when we use upfront rotational atherectomy? This is a 59 year old gentleman and he has recurrent acute coronary syndromes. And we can see the reason here why he has dense calcification in the ostium of the right coronary in the proximal RCA and in the mid RCA. Now we see long segment of fluoroscopic calcium. So we don't waste time with balloons. We go directly with rotational atherectomy up front without any ballooning, 1.5 bar, three runs. We ablate the lesion. Then we know that we succeeded when we expand three millimeter balloon fully at the lesion and at the ostium of the RC. The stent was deployed and the vessel was optimized and the final result was great. Another patient, 83 year old gentleman who has stable angina, but with diastolic heart failure, we see again the sign of long segment of fluoroscopically visible calcium with a severe stenosis in the middle. We don't waste time with balloons. We go with upfront rotational atherectomy. Then we stent, we optimize the stent and the final result is optimum. So the indications of atherectomy, especially rotational atherectomy, are non-dilatable lesions that are boning, non crossable lesions when the balloon doesn't cross. And when we have 360 degrees superficial calcium, it's near the lumen by IVUS or OCT. And I would like to suggest another indication when we see a long segment of fluoroscopically visible calcium and severe stenosis in the middle of that segment. These are four situations where I would think of upfront atherectomy. So the next time when you see a long segment of fluoroscopic calcium with severe lesion in the middle, don't waste time with balloons. Thank you for watching. I'd be glad to hear your opinion. When do you use rotational atherectomy as an upfront option? See you next week.